Hey everyone, Rowan here, and I am finally going to be doing a scene-by-scene -scene analyzation of the Dream Barbecue trailer. Let's get into this. I'm gonna be doing a deep dive into the trailer. Alright, that's self-explanatory. Also, I'm not going full screen because it may glitch out my um, screen recorder. Ina, the worker. So, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm, I think it's quite possible that this is implying that Inas are a species made to be workers. That's how I interpreted it, but I'm not entirely sure. It could just be referring to Ina herself. I see lack of conviction in your mind. So, I had to look this up. Conviction is a synonym for judgment. So basically, she made some sort of poor decision, or at least something that whoever wrote that message sees as a poor decision. We see like all these characters that are going to be in Dream Barbecue, and I think they've been trapped within the TV screens. Maybe like some sort of jail cell. Then we see Ina talking to or at least approaching whatever this thing is. I think this may actually be the creature itself, and it's sitting on a throne of sorts, so I think it's an authority figure, maybe even her boss. Then we see it's raising its, like, hand, I think, and Ina's raising hers. But it's weird because she's not actually raising that hand, it's just a shadow. Some sort of illusion, maybe? Here she is with a hole in her chest. It does seem to be glittering. So then we have the spatula lady. And as soon as she sees the spatula lady, she starts crawling towards it. You'll see it later. Then we have this big guy in the sky. I do think that they have like um, polytheism, so that could be another god within their world. And we see that these Mannequins are being, like, abducted, almost. I do think it may be, again, some sort of punishment. You could even tie in the punishment is imminent thing that was left undisclosed in Temptation Stairway. It is possible that this is a sequel showing that punishment, but personally, I hope not. So here we see that she has that green face, and she also doesn't have pupils for some reason. Also, for some reason, her hat is a different color here. It's fully green. So there she is cracked, and it happened as she's looking up at these weird things that look kind of like her megaphone. So something caused her face to crack. She's also missing both of her arms reason unknown. The landscape itself looks very dystopian. Then we get another message from possibly her boss. How unusual for you. Implying that typically she has good judgment, but she made some sort of mistake. And then we see her hands again. She's doing some strange formation. And here's what I addressed earlier, where she's crawling towards the spatula woman. Which implies that that spatula ballerina, whoever she is, is some sort of savior. Or someone who can help her in this situation where she's in a lot of distress. Like, possibly even in grave danger. And she's desperately trying to get to her. Then... We go back to this deity that was lifting the mannequins into the sky and is now scooping them up. Which could be, again, some sort of punishment. Then, I don't know if this is even the same scene. This could be a separate scene in which she's in distress. Because here we see, like, it looks like a different flavor of rain rock. And she's clearly panicking, so it seems like she's in danger in both situations. But I'm now wondering if these are just two separate dangers that she gets into. Here we see her panicking some more. And then in that split frame there, 
we could see that she has blue on one side and purple on the other. Maybe this is like a metamorphosis stage for her. Maybe she's undergoing an event so stressful that she's getting a new set of colors, which in this case are blue on one side and purple on the other. And if this metamorphosis is something that can happen to Ina's under stressful situations or just like any situation that involves intense emotions that could explain if the two Inas are the same character how they ended up with different color faces and different emotions. Let's put that dead meat in its place. Presumably again from the same person. And I think this is why she's being punished. Because it said at the beginning, Ina, the worker, and now it's saying dead meat, which is a metaphor for, like, someone who's useless. It seems that Ina did something that made her appear useless in the eyes of presumably her boss. Like in the Steam description, it says she needs to stop daydreaming. And it is called Dream Barbecue, so maybe she spent too much time daydreaming, not enough time working. She's not fulfilling her purpose, and so they're trying to execute her. At least, that's my interpretation. And then, we see it turn into a gun. The hand turns into a gun. See what I mean? I think that I think they're trying to execute her. So now we have um, gameplay. Coral Glasses is saying, I turned down another job opportunity to be here. So it seems that she's sort of like a workaholic. And she's like, oh, I, I had to turn down the job opportunity so that I could meet with you. Like, Coral Glasses is sort of the opposite of Ina. She's like a workaholic trying to do as much work as possible. Then we see, like, this alleyway and someone skipping in the back. And here, she's holding a gun. Again, we don't know why. And she picks up a tip, which oddly enough looks very vaguely like some sort of money. See, it even has the clown's face on it, which is weird because you'd think it would be a chocolate bar. Maybe it is a chocolate bar with like fancy wrapping. And then we have Toski Maiden being very childish and even using emoticons somehow. And she's saying, go away for some reason. And then if we look in the background, it seems like they're in some sort of glass thing. But like also a desert. But yeah, we get a bit of insight into Toski's character now. She's very childish and possibly a bit hot-headed. Now we have Ina holding her own arm. I saw a storyboard for this on Patreon. Of course, I'm not going to show it, but I can say that... She's paying her arm into that booth there to get a cup of coffee. That's literally what it is. I don't know how she's going to get the arm back or if she will get the arm back. But yeah, so then she's in a line of sorts. And for some reason, the people disappear as she goes through them. Maybe there's some sort of illusion or something, especially since so many of them look identical. And it seems to be some sort of carnival. You can even see a roller coaster in the background. Then she's in like what seems like a dance floor. I think those were on Patreon too. Those pants with the roots sticking out. There's like a face up here. But we see for a split second that there's a door. Then we see this wizard guy. Again, I saw on Patreon he seemed to have given Ina a quest to find a mother. Most of this just gives more questions than answers. I'm gonna say it. There's like pink bubbles in the background. Interesting. I wonder if that's kind of similar to whatever Volley had going on with the magic water. Then she's holding a fan of sorts. Is that like a spine or something? It looks like some sort of like skeletal structure. And then there's like a hand pointing down. Presumably she's supposed to put the fan in that location. Oh, someone in my live stream earlier mentioned this. Yeah, she's falling through like this abyss. And there are like these weird things flying by. Someone in the stream said they might be angels, but I'm not entirely sure. And we see one of them close up here. 
It seems to be wearing some sort of helmet. And it seems bird-like. It has feathers and even a tail. Now, she's standing. And she looks like she's about to snap. And it's presumably in that same place earlier where the others were being held captive. Then we see the setting changes. I don't know if this is actual gameplay or if it's just to look cool. But if it is actual gameplay, does she have teleportation abilities? And I feel like this pink flower may be important too. Now we see this place in the middle of nowhere. I've noticed a lot of locations in Ina are very barren like that. Like you see one building and just nothing. And they're these like gazelle people. This is also when Backroom Labyrinth starts up. I can't help but wonder if this is some sort of religious place and the gazelles are supposed to be like monks or something. Then we have this place, which those may even be like tombstones. Is it a graveyard? That could be a coffin now that I think about it. Then up here we see like, that's the place where Toski was. It's literally the ceiling. So she's upside down and there's also like, a pathway. All right, now we've got all these like computer keys and for some reason they look like fish. Then we have her clutching a dummy for some reason. And this is again with the hole in her chest and it also seems like that same orangey stuff is around her mouth for some reason as though there's now a hole developing in her face as well. And I don't know why she is holding the dummy. But I did see one person speculate that she had hallucinated the dummy as the spatula lady and that she, in her mind, is dancing with the ballerina. But in reality, it's just a hallucination and she's dancing with the dummy. So then we see these mannequins dying, I guess. Like we saw before, they were being executed. Then we see her sitting on the ground she has more of that blue and purple gunk. And now we can see these actually aren't rain rocks, but bullets. There are literally bullets raining down from the sky as she just sits there and watches them fall. That is horrifying. Like she's literally going through the freaking apocalypse. So then we see her here, but she, she doesn't look as serious as she did before. She's smiling, and there's more of these pink flowers. I'm telling you, something about those pink flowers is important. I don't know what that is in the back. What is that? Some sort of vehicle? Now look, this is cool. She taps, and it changes. So I'm wondering, does she have some sort of teleportation power? And if so, is it tied to those pink flowers that are always present on the screen when she supposedly teleports? And then we fade into the thing here saying Dream Barbecue, there's some fireworks, I don't think the fireworks are relevant, they're just like, yay, Dream Barbecue's coming soon. And wishlist on Steam. And that's all of it. So overall, I think that the dream barbecue trailer solidified a few things although it did open way more questions than answers we were given a little bit of lore first of all ina is some sort of worker and she is required to work or else face punishment and second whatever punishment she's receiving seems to be some sort of divine punishment. Third, it seems that she's not the only one being punished. Fourth, the punishment seems to be execution, which is really harsh. Fifth, it's possible that the scene with the hole in her torso is a completely different incident from the scene where her face turns green and cracks, and she just gets into horrible situations a lot. And it seems like it may even be some sort of apocalypse of sorts, but maybe not until the climax, since we see a lot of 
less frightening scenes throughout the trailer. It's also possible that Barbecue Ina can teleport thanks to those pink flowers. We learned that Coral Glasses may be a workaholic. Toski Maiden is very childish and possibly a little hot-headed. And we also learned that apparently Ina will be using a gun for some reason. Possibly to defend herself against presumably her boss who is trying to execute her by the looks of it. But again, this is just my interpretation. None of this has been confirmed. Let me know what you think in the comments or if you have anything to add. And... I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!